In this SwiftUI animation tutorial, we are going to explore how to build seamless looping animations. In particular, you will learn how to create the moving waves and rotation animations of the stream logo, which display when the stream chart iOS SDK application is launching. Hi, my name is Amos, Interaction Design Advocate from Stream. I have divided this animation into four different steps. The first step focuses on bringing the animation assets from sketch. In the second step, we will be creating initial animation states in Xcode. In the third step, we will be adding an animation trigger. In the last step, we will be changing animatable properties over time using state variables. You can download this animation from the GitHub repository, Stream Swift UI Animations. You can also download the code I suggest to use your own assets. Let's begin from Sketch. In Sketch, I have the animation assets. By going to the layer list, you can see we have a container, which is a circle. The circle is used as a mask for masking the waves. By pressing Shift, Alt, and Command, we can move the wave from left to right, like so. So this is how to draw the wave-like shape in Sketch. By selecting any of the layers under the export, we are going to export each of the three layers as PDF. So by selecting each one of them, you can click the option Export Selected Layers. I have already exported each of the layers to the Xcode Access folder. So when we go to the Xcode project, you can see here, we are now in the Assets folder and we have the three assets. Let's go to the animation file. So in this project, we have the stream logo and the two images of the wave. Over here, we are using the parent container ZStack so that we are able to place the wave images above the stream logo. We also use a vertical container with negative spacing of minus 46 to place one of the waves above the other. Since the top wave and the bottom wave are the same, we are using only one image. To hide the waves that extend beyond the bounds of the circle, we use a mask. And the masking view, we use the asset wave top, which is the circle. To animate a view in Swift UI, you have to change it over time. And to change anything over time, you need a state. Let's begin by defining all the states we want to use for this animation. We create the state move that will be used to create the horizontal movement of the waves. Next, we have another state called swing. We are going to use this to rotate the logo. The last one, splash, will be used to create opacity and scale animations. After adding the states, we have to define how we want this animation to be triggered. So over here, let's attach the animation trigger to one of the images. Let's add it over here. We're going to trigger this animation. When the view appears in Swift UI, we can use the on appear modifier or we can use the modifier called task. In the task modifier, we have to specify the animation we want to use. We can use implicit or explicit animation. Let's use explicit animation. In Swift UI, we create explicit animations using with animation. In the parentheses, we have to define the easing equation we want to use for this animation. Let's try one of the easing equations. We can choose any of these. Let's choose, for example, is in out, the one that has duration. Then we will set the duration of this animation to four seconds. Next, we have to set the final animation state. So over here, we have set the initial states and each of them is set to false. So we are going to begin with move. So let's bring the state variable move and toggle the state. 
So this means that we will be able to use the state variable move to toggle between true and false states of any property we want to animate. So what we have to do next is to use the state to animate the property we want to change over time. Since we want to create a horizontal motion, we're going to use the X offset. In Swift UI, we can add multiple modifiers to a view. You can see here, we already have the offset. Let's copy that and paste it here. Then we're going to change the value from Y to X because we want to create a horizontal movement. Instead of setting the X coordinate to a value, we're going to use the state move. To change this property over time, we want to use a ternary conditional operation, which has true and false values. So I will bring a question mark. For the true value, we will set the X coordinate to minus 150. And when this condition is false, we will set the state to 150. So let's preview to see what we have done. So you can now see the wave is moving from right to left. Let's reduce the speed of the movement to, for example, 0 0.5. Since we want to animate the top wave in the same way, we can copy this property and paste it here. Then we will change the values from 150 to 180. So you can now see we have the horizontal movement of both waves. At the end of the horizontal motion of the waves, we want them to disappear. We can do this by animating the opacity. To do this, we are going to use the state splash. So let's copy this animation and paste it here. Then we will change the state from move to splash. For the duration of this animation, we are going to use 0 0.25. And since we want this to happen at the end of the horizontal movement, we're going to delay this animation for a period of eight seconds. Let's copy the state and choose it to animate the opacity of the view. Over here, I'm going to add the opacity modifier and paste the state. We are going to use ternary conditional operation. You can see the initial state is set to false. So when this condition is true, we will set the opacity to zero. And when it is false, we will set it to one. So at the end of this animation, the bottom wave is going to disappear. Now we don't have it anymore. We want to have the same effect on the top wave. So let's copy that and paste it here. So at the end of the animation, both waves are going to disappear. Let's move on to create the rotation animation of the logo. To do this, we will use the state swing along with the rotation effect modifier. So let's copy one of the animations we created. For example, this one. And paste it above. Then we will change the state from move to swing. Let's change the duration to one second. For this animation, we can also define the number of iterations we want this rotation to undergo using repeat count. Let's remove the speed modifier and add repeat count. Let's choose the one that has the parameter auto reverses. Using the parameter auto reverses, you can create back and forth animation. So for the repeat count, we are going to set it to eight. So this means that the logo will be rotated eight times before it stops. For the parameter auto reverses, we will set the value to true. Next, we will use the state swing to animate the rotation effect of the logo. So here we have the logo. Let's add the rotation effect modifier. For the angle of rotation, we can set it in degrees or in radians. We are going to use degrees. 
and instead of setting this to a fixed value we are going to use the state so i'm going to paste it here with this animation we are going to use ternary conditional operation as we did before so for the true value of this animation we will set it to minus 10 that is the angle of rotation and when the condition is false we will set the angle of rotation to 10. the anchor point parameter of the view defines the location of the view at which transformations such as scale or rotation occurs by default it is set to the center but you can set it to any location of the view for example the left right top or the bottom let's set it to the center so you can now see as the waves moves from left to right the logo also rotates from the center the anchor point is also animatable so this means that we can also use the same state swing to change the anchor point parameter because we don't want this logo to be animating from the center to do that i'm going to remove the value center then i'm going to put swing so for the true value we will set the anchor point to bottom leading and when the condition is false we will set the anchor point to bottom trailing so in that case we are moving the anchor point from here to this point so you can now see as the logo rotates we are moving the anchor point from the bottom left to the bottom right and that creates this beautiful rotation animation let's move on to the next when the waves disappear at the end of this animation we want this to scale up and disappear we are going to animate two properties opacity and scale let's begin with scale we will use the state splash you can see here we have already defined the final state of the animation so let's use it to animate the scale effect i'm going to copy this scale effect modifier and paste it here again let's remove the value and put splash for the true value we're going to scale this to 40 and when the condition is false we will scale the logo to the actual size which is one so at eight seconds the logo will scale from one to 40. so this animation works exactly as we want but at the end of the animation we want the logo to disappear so let's add opacity i'm going to select this copy and paste it here so now at the end of the animation the logo will also disappear so this is how to animate the stream logo using nothing but swift ui in this animation we began by creating the states i showed you how to trigger the animation automatically using the task modifier we also looked at how to use the states to animate the properties over time to unlock more swift ui animation hidden gems and techniques you can subscribe to the stream developers youtube channel thanks for watching